Hi, this is 365801. And is everyone sitting comfortably? Do we all have our pens and pencils out? Are we all ready? Because this is BL101. <laughs> this is your textbook <laughs> for this course. And in this textbook, you will find all you need to know about what it is to be a boy's love fan. Whether you are Fujoshi, Fudanshi, or Fujin. Uh, once again, I have the high school life of Fudanshi in front of me, and once again, I'm talking about it. Why? This is my final impression video for this series, um, published by Seven Seas, and story and art by Atami Michinoku. Now, this series is a five volume series. Uh, I have talked about this before, I'm sure there's going to be a link to several videos um, at some point. Um, as you can see I have all five volumes, I was able to get the fifth volume for um, my December manga haul and I have since uh, reread volumes one through four and read volume five so I have a very good understanding now of the full series. I absolutely love the artwork, it's so fun, it's so bright, so colourful, it really pops and her um, art style and drawing style is absolutely fantastic. She gets it. She gets it 100%. She can draw the chibi comedy um, characters as well as drawing them very beautifully and artistically and she can also give them <laughs> exactly that same comedic style and flair by um, recreating other time periods uh, as well to give it that nostalgic feel as well. Very much of the um, Rose of Versailles. Oh! <laughs> shoujo shock. Is that what it's called? If it's not shoujo shock face, it should be called shoujo shock face and I know exactly what you're all thinking and that's the face I'm thinking of. So yes, shoujo shock. <gasps> um, so she does that as well. Um, this is an absolutely lovely series. It is a comedy series and it is a four panel comedy series and that's why it doesn't necessarily get the same kind of hype or attention or perhaps sales, I'm not sure. I hope it gets the sales. That's kind of why I'm making this video. I'm, I'm doing Seven Seas a favour here. I'm doing Atami Michinoku a favour. I'm doing you all a favour by doing this video. Guys, if you have not got on to this yet, get on it now! If you are a boys love fan, if you're in any way interested in the life of Fujoshi and Fudanshi, then you should be reading this manga. If you're doing any studies on fan studies and fan culture and uh, transnational <laughs> fandoms, you should be reading this series. I cannot rate this highly enough. It's just so good about portraying what it's like in a very realistic way. But of course, as a comedy, it is the life of uh, Fujoshi and Fudanshi, as you would live it if you were living in Japan. It follows some fantastic characters. It does have character development. It does have character growth. But there is one huge, big downfall, and that is the disappointment I felt from reading volume 5 and realising it was the end and it just didn't end <laughs> it kind of left it open it's a bit like when you're watching an anime and there's like 12 episodes and you think why is there only 12 episodes there should be at least 13 and you get to episode 11 by then you've forgotten that there was only 12 episodes and you've watched episode 12 and you realize at the end of episode 12 there is no episode 13 and it's for a manga that's ongoing and that hasn't ever been translated into English and you're left hanging there at the end of this episode 12 thinking ha huh, well, what happens next where's the rest of it and it's that same feeling I felt when I read to the very end of book 5 this series is a victim of this author's success Atami Michinoku who draws really fantastic and interesting and wonderful stories, very sexy stories, has it been able to garner a lot more success from her more standard BL work and therefore 
she was able to kind of give this up as it were. It was maybe a little bit too much work for her to be working on her standard BL and this. This was a digital only title so it was being um, uploaded digitally and then they were able to put it all together and publish it in actual Tankabon form and they were able to churn out five volumes of it and uh, I think a lot of people really related to it a lot of people were interacting with her on Twitter giving her ideas for the next volume so she was able to get a lot of um, content for it by her interactions but as she got more and more um, popular and a lot more busy um, this kind of has fallen by the wayside she's very clear about that at the end as well she's very very honest about how um, it's been a great thing to do, she really loves it, but that it's something that she um, she wasn't able to keep up. She has other works as well. If you go to Renta, uh, you'll be able to find some of her work. Um, it starts from the inside, which is a very, very sexy, and I read it last year, a uh, very sexy uh, manga. Um, <laughs> if you are at all interested in very, very sexy manga, uh, then it starts from the inside. Um, I, you're warned, it's very graphic. Um, whereas this is very easygoing and it's not graphic at all. So, if you're looking for something light, very funny and realistic to real life, then this is the series for you. Now I've just flipped them around so you can see the back of the volumes and they've got some really cute little illustrations of the characters and they also give you a little bit of a, a rundown of what the characters are like and um, what kind of uh, people they are. Now the ones for the back of um, volume 5 have the three main characters and that is Sakaguchi who's the main character um, it says a fledging Fudanshi faithful to his own desires is happy that he's made friends he can talk BL with many people think he's gay for some mysterious reason <laughs> I absolutely love it um, there's a boy in his class who has a major crush on him um, and he has no idea he exists oh it's such a shame um, and I absolutely love it <laughs> it's just so funny um, his best friend is Nakamura who as they described is a normie who understands the Fudanchi is slowly picking up more BL terms and is getting better at dealing with Sakaguchi um, I always love it when uh, there's the gag point when he says something and it's like because he knows and understands BL or otaku culture and then he kind of goes Ugh, and it's sort of like this gun moment when he's like oh, oh I shouldn't have said that like oh they're infecting me <laughs> um, Nakamura is just the cutest one I absolutely love him and I want him to have his own um, real BL story which is ironic and I'll get to that later on but it is ironic that I would really like him to have his proper BL story but he doesn't. Um, Nishihara it says has a Fujoshi mother so she's Fujoshi down to her DNA. She's at an age where BL doesn't really excite her anymore. Has she grown out of it? Oh my goodness when I read that I was just like yes because I have gone through that. I have gone through that moment when I'm like huh yeah I remember reading this when I was like woof this is hot this is great I love this and then rereading it like a couple of years later and you're like meh <laughs> it's not really doing it for me <laughs> like this was hardcore before no it's just meh <laughs> and you do go through that so if you are a BL fan and you're just going through that little moment of uh meh I'm not really bothered um it might come back it's come back for me you know it's like cyclical or something you just have to ride the wave <laughs> it'll come back um, and I just thought that was really funny. Nishihara seems to be um, like every Fujoshi I know uh, rolled into one and she's just lovely and sweet and her and Sakaguchi just get on so well and Nakamura just cannot understand why they're not a couple <laughs> and whenever he asks they're like ew. <laughs> They're just so funny. Um, they break the fourth wall at the end when they're they're talking about what they want to do about graduation. And Sakaguchi says, "Well, it's not like we're ever going to graduate. We've been the same age since the start of the series." 
and of course they break this fourth wall and it just makes it so funny. What they also have at the end of each of these books, or not all of them but most of them, is a mini um, fake manga which is based on a doujinshi that one of the other characters writes which is for Shiratori who's on the back of the first volume and Nakamura. So Shiratori and Nakamura are supposed to be having some sort of romantic relationship and one of the other characters who's also uh, at school with them writes doujinshi about them. So he has his BL story but it's actually a doujinshi story. It's just lovely. I really love the fact that the characters um, have this little chibi bit at the back. So you can find out all the, the characters at the back of all of the volumes. I really do need to praise Seven Seas for putting this out because it seems like such a niche series and um, not many four panel comedy um, manga get produced and published so for it to be a BL one is really great. It reminds me a lot of Gekkan Shoujo Nozaki-kun, so if you're a fan of Nozaki-kun um, you'll probably like this as well because that's also for uh, panel uh, comedy and that's actually been doing quite well in terms of its sales and um, publicity because of the anime and this comes along with an anime as well and the anime for this is available on Crunchyroll so I'm doing some more promotion <laughs> um, go check it out Each episode is probably only about four minutes long, maybe four minutes, and there's about 12 episodes. So once again, there'll be that episode and you're like, is that it? Is that all we're getting? They're really short. They don't, they don't have big full length ones, but they're hilarious and they're cute and they're sweet. And they do have that sort of gag manga quality. I do find that watching the anime is fun and interesting and I get a lot of enjoyment from it, but I definitely enjoy reading the manga more, just purely because there's a lot more character development, there's a lot more action, a lot more uh, comedy, there's just so much more in the manga than there is in a very short 12 episode, 4 minute each um, anime, so um, if you do like the, the, if you see the anime as a little taster, and if you like it, then get a volume of this. Um, I do have to say well done to Seven Seas for choosing it, and also for Ryan Peterson, who is the translator. Gag manga are notoriously difficult to translate, and notoriously difficult to get right, and for people to enjoy. And I love this, I really enjoyed it. So Ryan Peterson, well done. Congratulations, really good job. Um, there were a couple of little translation notes um, in one or two of the volumes, not many, and whenever there was a translation note, it was never to do with the the gag. There was n it was never to do with the punchline. It was always to do with something that was said in the first or second panel. So it wasn't like you read the joke and went, well, I don't get it, and then had to read a cultural note next to it and go, oh, okay, if I'd known that, it, it would have made sense. You know, it was never like that. The gags were always spot on. It's always really hard to get comedy or humour in another language. And especially when you need to pair that up with the visual elements that are being portrayed. So I think he did a really, really good job. Well done, Ryan Peterson. And well done, Seven Seas. Um, so, once again, I am saying go and get The High School Life of Fudanchi. Um, Go check it out on Crunchyroll as well, the anime. Um, there's only five volumes, so it is short, but they've left it slightly open-ended, so even though it says the fun-filled finale, um, and it is very fun-filled, there's always a lots of fun going on with these characters. It doesn't ever feel like it's truly ended, so um, maybe one day she can go back to it. Maybe she'll do more on online or something like that um, because I really love these characters and I would like to see where they do actually go and what they end up doing. But as Sakaguchi said, <laughs> they will never graduate. They'll all be stuck in third year high school, <laughs> which is a little bit like how I felt in my time in Japan. 
<laughs> stuck in high school <laughs> endlessly which is what why it's so much like my life <laughs> uh yes the high school life of a dunchy get it it's great